Hey, this is Butterbean. You watching Real Fans, Real Talk. RealFansRealTalk.com Where Arthur Domus, Trip Young, and Intern Tom For the white and black fans Asia to Manhattan I'll get all my facts from my bro Mark the Stats Man If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand Sports, gossip, all the hot topics RealFansRealTalk.com Got it, they got the hottest bloggers Did Jeremy Lin hurt? We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first I'm talking about the latest I'm talking about the greatest Go check out the art even tell a neighbor, tell a body sent ya. From spring to winter, tune in should be the only thing on your agenda. Certified cosign, you know what I'm about, son. Real fans, real talk.com. I'm out one. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another very special edition of Real Fans Real Talk. I'm Mark the Statman Skevich. I'm here with the man, the myth, the legend, the one and only Butterbean. Thanks for coming on the program. Hey, good to be here. Good to be here. Good to talk with y'all. All right. And uh, interesting story on how you got into fighting in the beginning. Uh, there was the series out there, Tough Man Contest, and you kind of started on a little bit of like a dare from uh, colleagues. Can you tell us about that? Well, all the guys dared me to enter the Tough Man, which I did. I had to lose 20 pounds because I had a 400-pound weight limit. I weighed 420 at the time. And I went on a butter bean and chicken breast diet. And I hated the butter beans. They just got old. They were bland. You know, in the South, you mix grease and other and butter and good stuff and a lot of seasoning. But to eat them healthy, you got to cook them just like it is. And it wasn't so hot. So that's how the butter bean nickname come on. And, and it went from there. After I won 18 tough men, they told me I couldn't fight in them anymore. And so I said, I want to go pro. I want to go after Tyson. And he never wanted none. No. Chicken and butter beans, like, how, who came up with that diet? Like, how, how was that, uh, like, the weight loss diet? Well, I mean, butter beans, they got a lot of protein. You just, there's not a lot of fat in them if you don't cook with the, you know, the grease and all. So they're, they're kind of filling, but they can, kind of, they kind of, kind of bland. Now, Tough Man Contest, you dominated it so much that when the video came out for the Sega Genesis, I remember it, and uh, much like Tyson, you were the main uh, uh, ba the main fighter or the boss character all the way to the, at the end. How did it feel to be on the cover and highlight of a video game? Oh, well, it was really cool because I was still working a factory job at the time when it came out, you know, so how many guys build mobile homes or have a video game out, so... Yeah, I've always been humble, though, about it and, you know, enjoyed it. Did you ever play the game yourself and try to beat yourself in it? Oh, without a doubt. I was tough. I mean, it's hard to beat me. All right. Did you ever end up beating yourself? Oh, a couple times. I mean, but hey, it was me. <laughs> that definitely must have been interesting to play against yourself in a video game. Uh, also, uh, the Knockout King series, I mean, you're a legend out there. I mean, your name lives on even though you're retired. Every single time there's a Knockout Kings uh, video game, you're on there as well. So uh, have you ever tried any of those? A couple of them. I've, I've played them all. I mean, they always send me copies of the new games coming out and whatnot. And, you know, it's kind of messed up. I, I fought in Tough Man for a long time before that came out. Everybody knew from, from Tough Fan, but as soon as the game came out, everybody knew me from that. And then same thing with, with uh, professional wrestling when I, when I was in WrestleMania. You know, I, at that time I had a lot of pro fights, but after WrestleMania, everybody was going to talk about me knocking out Bart Gunn and dominating. Yeah, but, but that wasn't your first time in wrestling. You were also in another pay-per-view against uh, Mark Merrill Mark as well. Mark Sable, yeah. I stole Sable from him. <laughs> That's a nice little catch to steal after a match. <laughs> Definitely must have been a great accomplishment there. But you were very well uh, um, diverse in the fight world. Like uh, you, you decided to do not only Tough Man, you end up going pro in boxing. You did uh, K1. You did pride fighting with MMA. Pretty much everything out there you, you did. I mean, it, it was what motivated you to try a little bit of everything? Well... <sighs> There was a guy up north, and he uh, was telling me about, you know, fighting, and Mark Coleman's his name. He's, you know, he fight over there a lot. He goes, y'all try it sometime. So I called him up. I said, sure, I'll try it. Just, you know, what do I got to do? He goes, well, let me check around. Next thing I know, I got 
promoters from all over the world calling me. And I mean a lot of them. So I said, heck, I'll go over there and fight. I don't mind. So I went over there and knocked out the first guy I fought pretty easy. Then they had me go up against... And I knew after I fought him that I needed to learn a little bit more of the technique because uh, there's a lot to it. K1's not an easy easy task just to step into like I did and knock somebody out. And, but they wanted me to fight Ernesto Hoost was the baddest man in that area. So I, I declined on that one. I go, let me get a little bit of experience under my belt, and then I'll fight him. But once I got a little bit of experience, they didn't want me to fight him no more. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I learned to check kicks and... And I enjoyed it. And then I went to Pride. You know, a lot of the fighters, they, they wouldn't let fight both organizations, Pride and K1, because they're big com competitors. But they, they, they let me do it because they had no choice. Now, you mentioned fighting all around the world, having promoters all around the world. Uh, you grew up in Alabama. You live in Alabama now. Can you tell us, you know, uh, about traveling the world and why, why you pick Alabama to, as your home? Well, I mean, like I said, we're out here outside. I mean, it's real peaceful out here. I love it in the South. I mean, you know, you got neighbors, you driving down the road, somebody's broke down, you pick them up and give them a ride. You don't see that in a lot of places. I mean, in New York, you break down, you're stuck, you're walking. People got places to go and things to do. They don't really care. But uh, uh, traveling the world, what is that like as far as I know when we interview other athletes, basketball players, for example, who travel the world, and it's like a surreal experience because the people out there really treat you like royalty. How was it like uh, traveling around the world? I mean, the people were really good responsive. I'm really easy get, you know, to get along with. I had a great time. I mean, every, everywhere I've went, you know, China, Japan, Korea, everywhere. Very good people. I mean, they're, they're really good. All right, well, let's backtrack a little bit to uh, we were talking about Tough Man Contest. Then you decided to go pro in the boxing world. Uh, what was that transition like exactly? It wasn't that bad. I mean, I fought a real fast pace. You know, unlike a boxing, boxing can be boring. I was never a boring fighter. That's why I skyrocketed and people, I, I, I got a lot of fans out there because I was not boring. I went out to fight. Just like, you know, in Tough Man, you only got one minute rounds. So you got to fight quick. Well, I took that philosophy into the the four you know the four round fights with three minute rounds, and I just kept the pace up. So that's why they ended up calling me the king of the four rounders because I fought such a fast pace. They wanted to see that. Yeah, definitely a lot more exciting than when you see a lot of dancing going on there in the boxing world. There's a, a new style of boxing which uh, you know basically you probably would have been the king of in your day. Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. Uh, big knockout boxing BKB. The ring is 17 feet in diameter, a circle, no ropes. Uh, uh, five or seven two-minute rounds. So that, that's a little bit your style of boxing, I guess. Uh, three minute rounds never give me no trouble. I was able to punch the whole time. You know, to change the sport would be crazy. I mean, they're going to try it. It's not going to work. I'm sorry for whoever's doing it. it. It don't interest me. You know, boxing in a ring, that's what it is. It's square, square circle, and there it is. Do you think anything will catch up to boxing? I mean, we see UFC kind of picking up a little bit as far as, uh, well, picking up a lot, actually, as far as fan base. But do you think uh, anything will ever catch up to boxing? Boxing has been around forever. I mean, UFC has kind of, in a way, took over a lot of the fan base. But as soon as we get another big heavyweight that, that go out there, you know, and, and bang and another Tyson or somebody like that, it'll, it'll transfer back over to boxing. Hey, Dante might be the one to do it. Dante Wilder you're referring to. Right. And you're also involved in the entertainment world. Uh, we, we saw you in uh, the Jackass movie with Johnny Knoxville. Uh, can you tell us about that experience, what it was like? And, like, I mean, Johnny Knoxville's a small guy. I mean, you probably could have done a lot more damage than you did. But, well, what do you, I, you know, I didn't realize it was actually really want me to knock him out. So I was playing with him for a little bit. And I said, heck, I'll do it. If y'all want me to knock him out, I'll knock him out. Uh, you know, I've done other movies before. I was in chairman of the board of the Carrot Top. I've done a lot of different sitcoms. And one, I just got back from New York doing one called Friends of the People, which is coming out soon. So keep your eyes out for it. But uh, yeah, it's it's it was a lot of fun. You also had a, a series, a TV series that lasted for a year, where uh, Deputy Butterbean, a uh, big law. Uh, could you tell us about that? Well, I worked with the Net Team prior to the, to Discovery finding out about it, and they wanted to, to follow us around and. So I said, sure. I mean, and I talked to the police department. They, they were fine with it. And 
just you know, just to to bring people's awareness to what kind of drugs. If you keep your eyes open, there are there's drugs everywhere. Just keep your eye out, and you know, and and put a stop to it when you can. And uh, you have a, like a passion for law enforcement, or what made you get involved with that? Well, there's a lot of kids go out there getting drunk and 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 drinking and driving and and doing drugs, and it's just not a good combination. I mean, I got grandkids, I got kids. You know, I don't want somebody all hopped up on pills or speed and getting in the wreck, and, and, you know, that's where all the, the, the theft and things like that come from around here, basically, is the people trying to get money for the drugs. So if you put a stop to it, there's a lot less thieves and a lot less drugs going on. I definitely agree with you on that one. And you, you mentioned your kids and grandkids. Here you are, a big-time superstar. Now you're taking it a little bit easy. Uh, what's the transition like going from the superstar Butterbean to being uh, the, the family retired man that is now? I love it. I mean, I have five grandkids right now. I love it. I got two more on the way. So, I mean, more more the merrier. I mean, spend time with grandkids is, is the greatest thing in the world. Yeah, they say you haven't uh, lived until you become a, a grandparent. I guess is, is that an accurate statement? Yeah, kids are great. You know, they can, they can get by with a little bit, but the grandkids get by with about anything. People say that you can love them and then take them home. They can stay all the time. I wouldn't mind. There definitely must be a, a great experience there. Now, I mentioned before you've done a lot of different things, uh, kickboxing, MMA, WWE wrestler. What were, what were, would you say would be your favorite moment, favorite fight, or favorite activity, whether it was TV or WrestleMania or uh, a specific boxing fight or fight that you would say was your favorite moment in your career? Well, you know, I got the most response out of knocking out – Johnny Knoxville knocking him out. I got the most response, but to me was was taking on Larry Holmes and going ten rounds with him, where everybody said, "Oh, he can't go past four. I just wanted to prove him. You know, I dropped Holmes in the tenth round, but he won the decision because he was afraid of me. All he wanted to do is jab and run, which he done a good job of it. And people stereotype the big guys, and you know, kind of feel like they're out of shape and everything. But your your training is pretty intense, and you do have to pass a, a physical is it the same physical for everybody or how does that work as far as uh you know considering you were doing four round fights for the majority of your career how does that work as far as uh the boxing commission and everything yeah the physicals everything's the same as i fought on fights that everybody was borderline blood pressure and all that other than me i was perfect the doctors was like being you're the biggest most out of shape looking one here but you're in the best shape out of everybody i said the big guy's got to work harder you know, to be able to do what I did, I had to work harder than everybody else. As far as big names that you fought, uh, Peter McNeely was kind of one of the bigger uh, challengers that you had. You mentioned Larry Holmes already. Uh, what was it about uh, the Peter McNeely fight? You ended up winning that fight. Did you feel like you proved yourself a little bit more since he was more of a recognized name? Not really. There wasn't much to McNeely. I mean, I even said that when Tyson fought him. I said, you know, you don't put me in there with Tyson, then you'll have a fight. You know, McNeil was just a walkover. I'll be honest with you, I walked over him easier than Tyson did. But, you know, there was uh, other fighters out there, a guy named Louis Monaco. You know, he knocked out Kevin McBride, which McBride ended up knocking out Tyson. So there was, there was a few other names that, that kind of slipped under the radar, but real tough guys. And uh, you mentioned Tyson. That's a fight that you always want in your career. You once said that one of the reasons why you got into fighting was to fight Tyson. Why do you think it never happened? You know, when, one thing I had, I had power. And that's one thing they knew they didn't want to put up Tyson against, somebody that had power that would go at him. You know, McNeely kind of showed one thing to the to everybody how to fight Tyson. You got to go at him. You got to, you know, McNeely didn't have the weapons to go at him, but, but I did. You know, you got to go straight to Tyson, go in there banging, and he really can't handle that. He's used to being, the, you know, moving in defensive and, and jumping when he wants to. But having somebody go at him, he just couldn't handle it. And uh, Kimbo Slice uh, called you out a few years back, but you were already pretty much along the lines of retiring at that point. Uh, is it because you were retiring that you didn't want that fight, or what, what is the reason for that? Well, it was a never offer. I mean, Kimbo wanted to use my name to kind of bring himself up, but when it come down to it, they didn't want to fight me. Kimbo's a joke. I'll be honest with you. Kimbo's a joke. <sighs> yeah, he beat up people from Walmart parking lots. Good move. Made a lot of money doing it, but as far as an actual boxer, he ain't never going to do it. All right, there you have it. Um, is there anything that you want to say to the fans out there? Uh, any uh, message to the fans out there? 
hey, enjoy life, spend time with your kids and grandkids. You'll never regret that. What about uh, aspiring fighter that's out there? Uh, any words as far as uh, motivational words for the fighters out there? You know, the main thing I can say about fighting, and that's when I started actually doing a lot better, go out there and have a good time. you got to enjoy doing it. If you're not enjoying having fun, don't do it. I mean, you got to enjoy doing it. you got to go enjoy going out there and you got to enjoy working out. The morning runs ain't always the best, but, hey, you got to have fun doing it. And was there a favorite fighter that you had growing up that uh, made you uh, in, into fighting? You know, originally it was George Foreman, and then a couple, you know, I'd only follow some of the fat people that I like. Like Johnny Tapia was a lot of fun. Mickey Ward, Gotti, they're both fun to watch. Just fun fighters that have good personalities about them. You know, but but Big George, he, he kind of helped me out. I mean, he really he really inspired me. Yeah, definitely. Uh, what do you think of the uh, MMA fight or uh, big country? <sighs> Nothing impressive. I just don't like him, like his attitude that much. I mean, it's just he don't he don't impress me. Well, I'm personally a fan of of the big guys that are uh, look a little bit overweight but can handle their business. So that's why you were one of my personal favorites. Well, I'm not saying that you know I just I just don't care for him. I watched the show when he was on it, and I mean that's about all I've seen him fight. If he's improved since then, I'm happy for him. But he had a long way to go from from the show. All right, and. Uh, once again, Mark the Statman Skevich here with the legendary Butterbean, one of my personal favorite all-time fighters. Uh, great to have you on the program. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. All right. Make sure you check us out, realfansrealtalk.com. Thank you all for joining us, and we'll see you next hey, time. Hey, what's up? This is the WBA middleweight champion of the world, Daniel Jacobs. Keep it here. Keep it locked right here on Real Fans Real Talk. Welcome to Real Fans Real Talk. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is sure as hell not a participation trophy. You made your debut on the undercard for the Floyd Mayweather versus Ricky Hatton, another big fight. What, what, what was it like just being on, on the same card as one of the greatest to ever do it? You know, that's a tremendous opportunity in itself. You know, most guys, when they first turn professional, they don't have an opportunity to fight on a big scale like that. You know, they turn pro in maybe like a club show or somewhere like that, small atmosphere, small audience. But with me, I had the greatest opportunity to fight on the greatest ever, Floyd Mayweather, Ricky Hatton. You know, his, his fan base was tremendous, so they came over from the U.K. It was USA versus the U.K. And they were chanting, they were screaming. The energy was amazing. And for me to witness that my first time around, I found a new love for the sport. Hi, this is John Starks, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. What does Spike Lee mean to the Knicks? He means a, a lot. You know, he's obviously one of the... Nick's greatest fans and greatest supporters and you know on that sideline when you run out that tunnel you always see Spike Lee during my time and he was always there and he was the inspiration to you know all the players. Yo this is Deontay the Bronx Bummer Wilder heavyweight champion of the world and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. What's going through your mind when your hand is being raised in that ring and it's the new heavyweight champion of the world Deontay Wilder? The first thing that went through my mind was like wow you know the, the, the fact when I went back to iterate it on how I promised my daughter that I'd be a world champion, that first thing that came to my mind, like, yeah, I'm all, I, you know, I fulfilled that promise. Well, he was in the NBA. They're saying Khloe Kardashian's husband, like, he's not his own Yeah, I don't even understand entity. that. Like, like, they introduced him as a reality TV star. Yeah, like, yeah. no, like, that's not how he... How about NBA champion? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's not what he came <laughs> yeah. to the table. Like, it's not like he came to the table as... Does, does NBA championship get trumped by being a Kardashian husband? Yeah, Uncle Ralph, you already know what it is. You know what you're doing. Video Music Box, I'm here. Real fans, real talk, and that's the way it's going down. Don't go nowhere. Fix your face. They ain't going nowhere. Here with the biggest celebrity in the building and bowling for peace Harlem's own Jim Jones welcome to the program Jim thank you thanks for having me how y'all feeling out there all right now you, you're famous for the song ball and one of one of your big hits but I didn't know you could actually ball out there you were doing your thing tell us about your performance uh, a little bit from Harlem in Harlem you you grow up playing basketball that's one of the uh Prompt that prompt time things to do when you go outside. So, you know, that's where that stems from. This is Anthony Mason. You're watching Real Fan, Real Talk. Coming at you live from my house. There's a lot of pre-Madonna stuff going on. So you think that the league has gotten soft? 
Oh, it's definitely gotten soft. I mean, look at the rules. In a couple of weeks, uh, Floyd Mayweather versus Manny Pacquiao, five years in the making. And we've been going around every, you know, every person that we've had on the show, we asked them this question. Who you got, Floyd Money Mayweather or Manny Pacquiao? I don't know. It's going to be a tough fight. I think Pacquiao's going to pull it off. All right. We got one, 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 for the, one for the Pacquiao side. So, now, do you, do you feel like uh, that boxing is a dying sport? You know, it, fights like this bring it back. I mean, it's like this all the time. Uh, normally, it's a heavyweight fight that brings it back. But uh, this fight's brought a lot of attention. What UFC's ever, ever charged $100 plus for pay-per-view? Yeah, boxing's back. Yo, this is Teresa Weatherspoon, better known as Teaspoon, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. You're one of the pioneers of the WNBA back in 1997 when the league started with the New York Liberty. What was that feeling like, being there, one of the first to ever do it? Man, you know, this is it, it was amazing to, to play in Madison Square Garden. I'm sure it was amazing for all the other young ladies and the teams in which they played for, but we were playing in New York City. We were playing in Madison Square Garden. We were playing in front of the greatest fans there is in the world. For those of you that don't know how Shot for Shot works, we ask a series of five questions, two contestants, one judge, whoever the judge agrees with, gets the point. This is Vin Baker, you watching Real Fans Real Talk. What was it like stepping out on the court? I'm sure you were a fan of some of the guys that you're playing against, maybe Michael Jordan, or what was that like being on the court with some of the guys as a teenager that you watched play? Terrifying. Uh, my, my first few times being on the floor with these amazing stars, you know, seeing Michael and seeing Patrick, Carl Malone, I was just in awe. Uh, but I had to get out of all really fast because they were kicking my butt in the first year. I'm gonna have my toughest number of main fight. Finish him. Excellent. Flawless victory. A word around the campfire is you do a pretty good DMX impression. You feel like uh, doing that for us here on Real Fans Real Talk? Y'all put me on the spot now. I can't. Dog! I guess I can't even do it. You know what I mean? We'll, we'll, we'll get you time to prep up a little bit towards towards, towards the end. You know, compose yourself. I know you weren't expecting it. At the end of the interview. Next. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm just trying to come out. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Watching real fans, real talk should be a unanimous decision. Real fans, real talk dot com. Well, Arthur Dom is Trip Young and intern Tom. What's going on? It's Trip Young. You know I couldn't let that man have all the fun. I had to come and sit down with my main man, Butterbean, the king of the four rounders. We out here in Alabama. I'm having a good time because we out here. We in the shop right now. Butterbean gave us the privilege of, uh, of bringing us out to his, to his his place of work where he does all the all, all of the, the wood chopping. He got the animals out here, the chickens. I done, I done seen a couple of couple of crazy things going on out here. If if you guys hear in the background, you might hear some animals out here. So. So it's definitely a beautiful thing. But, uh, Butterbean, once again, thank you for coming to the show. Hey, good to have you. I'm going to put you out back with Big Frank, my big sheep. Yeah, you'll have fun with him. I, see, I'm trying to stay away from animals and, and whatnot in, in the wild. I went to the Bronx Zoo before, and that's where I like to keep it. You know, I like to have them on the other side of the fence. I don't need to be up close and personal, um, especially, you know, we're up close and personal because I'm dealing with, you know, one of the one of the, the best fighters to do it, a legend in the sport, you know, so, somebody that that racked up 51 straight victories at one point in his career, and you've had close to 100 fights. How do you do it? Yeah, you just go out there and have fun. That's the main thing. You have fun doing it. Actually, if you count all the fights, counting tough man, professional boxing, MMA, K1, pride, way over 200. See, that's way over 200. You know, listen, and I and I want to I want to I want to go back. You know, to because I, I doing my homework because we we got to do our homework when we when we coming out for an interview. And I was reading that as a child you were actually bullied. Now, is 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 that accurate? Oh yeah, I, you know, there's there's a couple guys in school that that always, you know, I was a big fat kid, so they wanted to pick on me. But you know, now they're they 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 tell their kids they grew up with me and we're best friends. Yeah, right. Yeah, I asked you that because you know I work in the school system and in junior high school, I teach a lot of kids. So you know, especially now, bullying is very prevalent. Have you done anything um, like in your retirement, like to get involved in the stop bullying movement? I haven't had the opportunity. I'd love to. Yeah, it's just it's, it's a bad thing. Back when I was young, kids got their butts whipped, and now they they can't do it, so the kids don't know not to go in there and shoot up the schools. So I mean, bullying bullying was a big part of that. I'm sure a lot of the a lot of the things they were just trying to get get that out of them because they just took all they could take. 
Yeah, and, I mean it, it's crazy because you would not see say uh, Butterbean used to get bullied. I definitely would not have have believed that. But you know, listen, it, it definitely does happen. It's something that we we do need to uh, get rid of. You know, but kids are gonna be kids. I mean, adults are bullying, so you know, what are you gonna do? Um, now I want I want to jump because I'm gonna be jumping back and forth throughout the interview. The reason that we're actually able to sit here with Butterbean is another friend of ours who's also you know extended real fans, real talk family member, Sean Graham, who works out of the FAF gym in uh, Massachusetts. He's the one that put the link together. And uh, you train with Sean, you know, towards the end of your career. How was that? Yeah, I mean, Sean got along great, become good friends, worked out with him a good bit, and he went to a lot of the fights with me, helped me out. I mean, a lot of fun, good guy. Great gym. And how did, how did you wind up linking up with Sean? We had fought overseas, I think it was in Korea, and he had brought somebody to fight, and me and Sean just hooked up and, and exchanged numbers and got from, went, went on from there. Um, did, you come, did you go up to Boston? Did he come down here for the training, or where did you guys meet at to, to work out? I went to Boston to his gym there. It was a really nice gym. Great place. Sean's got a good program going on. Yeah, he definitely does. Again, shout out to uh, to Sean again. Um, I know, I know. Right now, you're you're in retirement. You're with your family. But before, uh, you know, before you decide to retire, what you know, what did, what did you do to prepare yourself for life after your career? I ain't no really preparing. I mean, I was still living it. You know, the kids and grandkids. You know, once I had my grandkids, it's, I said it's time to time to hang it up, spend some more time with them. So there's no way Butterbean is coming out of retirement for another fight. No, I'm done. I mean, once you have grandkids, I mean, you really don't know when, you, when you're having your career that you need to spend more time with your kids because they grow up so quick. I mean, so I'm making sure that I spend enough time with the grandkids so I ain't missing it. I got you. Now, have any of your, your grandkids or your, or your children ever expressed an interest in fighting? Well, both of my boys have fought before. Uh, my middle son, 26, he wants to fight still some. But, yeah, we're working with him. I'm not, not pushing him, but I'm, I'm encouraging him. Now, do you train him, or does he have other trainers? No, I work with him. Okay. And, and what about your grandkids? Is that something that, that they're trying to get into as well? Ah, they're all young, so I, I don't know. Have they, have they seen your fights? Do, they, do you guys, like, sit and get the popcorn together? No, and watch no. Like I say, my oldest is five, so, yeah, they're, they're not into that yet. You actually fought uh, in the super heavyweight division. You won the IBF championship belt. What was that like? You know, it was great. I mean, I won some other smaller belts, the WAA and the WBU overseas. But, you know, it's just I had fun doing it. That was the key thing. You have got to have fun doing what you do. Now, do you st you have your belts, like, hanging up on, in, in the house right now? I got them somewhere. They're, I think they're in the man cave somewhere. All right, we got, we got we got to check out the man cave before we leave. I want to see some of them belts, man. Um, now going back to the heavyweight division because I mean you really, if you if you're a casual boxing fan, you may know the Klitschko brothers. You know maybe I mean I know we're down here in Alabama. You know you may know Deontay Wilder, but what's going on with the heavyweight division? Why why aren't we seeing more more heavyweights? You know like we had uh, we had Tyson, you had Holyfield, you had Foreman. You know you had all these guys at one point. You know in the heavyweight division, but now it's it's kind of like dwindling down. What's going on? It goes through spells. I mean, it's like been that like that forever. I mean, back in the day when Holmes was was fighting, he was so many heavyweights back then, with Ali and and Frazier, and you know Holmes was a great fighter, best you know one of the top top five to ten of all times. But he was kind of not kind of overlooked because so much other talent was going on. And now is you know like I said is is it's a select few in in that division. Um, how long do you think it'll be before it, it becomes competitive again, like it was in the eighties, nineties? I'm not that good a guesser. I'm just hoping. I really am. I like to watching the big guys get there, slug it out. All right. Now, again, once again, Butterbean. You know, you you you're known worldwide. You've been on TV, been in movies. I want to know, you know, is 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 that gonna be? Is it gonna be more? I know you said you got the show you're working on, you taping in New York, but um, reality TV. Are you ready? You know, are we gonna get a a, a real boxes of Alabama or something like that? No, I'm done with TV. I, I'm kind of hung it up. I mean, I just honestly, I enjoy just living a simple life, hanging out with grandkids, and spending quality time with the kids. So tell us, uh, what is the average day like uh, in, in for Butterbean? How this is it? Spend it hanging, hanging out, relaxing, getting enjoy life. All right, that's that. I mean, you, you know, you can't beat how that. Much better, how much better can it be than that? Just to get to enjoy life. 
Exactly. I, I definitely got to agree with you there. And we're gonna we're gonna have to check out to check out the, the place because I know Butterbean wants us to see the animals. They didn't they didn't been the, the chickens has been you know been clucking. You know, I, I so we, we got some sheep back there. Or something you hear them in the, in the background of the camera. So we might have to check this place out a little bit. But uh, once again, Butterbean, it is a huge pleasure and an honor to have you on the show. We definitely appreciate you. Whenever you're in New York, you definitely more than welcome to come sit in the studio with us live and chop it up again. Most definitely will do. Next time in New York, I'll holler at y'all. All right, this is Trip Young, Real Fans, Real Talk. I'm here with the man, the myth, the legend, Butterbean, right here in Jasper, Alabama. We got Real to, fans and real talk. That's right, we got to hit the road, get up out of here. We got to get back to New York. New York is calling us, so we're going to see you guys when we see you back in the studio. Peace. Face facts, what up, what up? Real fans, real talk.com. Well, Arthur Domus, Trip Young, and intern Tom. For the white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan. I get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats Man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand. Sports, <laughs> gossip, all the hot topics. Hey, hey. Real fans, real talk.com got it. Uh -huh. They got the hottest bloggers. Did Jeremy Lynn hurt? We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first. I'm talking about the latest, yeah, I'm talking yeah. about the greatest. Yeah, yeah. Go check out the art. Cost. Even tell a neighbor, tell him Bobby sent you. From spring to winter, tuning in should be the only.